the judge's decision in back in 2010 is really instructive because as Nancy said he's the first person who is a neutral person to have reviewed all of the evidence in the case and um, he decided that the evidence in the case was either uh, not credible because it was obtained through torture or coercion or for other reasons um, and I remember reading um, you know the first time I was able to read the diary a few years ago, so much more became clear to me because Muhammadu <coughs> talks about the torture that he was subjected to that resulted in him providing false information about himself and others. Because essentially he was told that he was told what they wanted him to say. And so he was also in a position, he says in the book, of the more incriminating the fiction he could make up, the happier his interrogators were. There's one point. He talks about, um, <coughs> whenever they asked me about somebody in Canada, I had some incriminating information about that person, even if I didn't know him. Whenever I thought about the words, I don't know, I got nauseous, because I remember the words of redacted. All you have to say, and now we're quoting redacted, all you have to say is, I don't know, I don't remember, and will F you. And that, of course, is the obscenity that was used. And so Muhammadu says, I erased these words from my dictionary. And that passage comes after you read about the pain that he goes through. And you know, one of the things, again, as I think about this book and in the last year that, that we've had with more information coming out about torture, our debate about torture the last few months has been so debased in a way because it's focused on effectiveness and of course effectiveness doesn't matter right it, it's unlawful it's immoral but I think this book shows yet again that there are really two things that torture absolutely guarantees one is pain and the other is false information <laughs>